This is a follow-up to this project that looked at making an exapod. While putting this tutorial together, I realized there were bits in the original rig that were unnecessary. To keep this video short, I've excluded the modeling portion and included a working blend file you can download in the description below if you want to follow along. Let's begin. If you've downloaded the working file, this is what you'll see when you open it. The exapod is broken down into three components, top platform, the actuator, and the bottom platform. Since exapods generally have six actuators, our first step will be to multiply and distribute them. Right, so here's our starting model. We have the top platform, the bottom platform, and then we have the actuator set up. This is where the majority of the work will happen. So before we get started, I just want to give a quick tour of what the model is looking like. Piston portion is divided into three segments, the top, the middle, and the bottom. We've got the universal or the car down joint set up here in the middle. But the way that this is built is that this cross section isn't combined, it's two separate sections. And that's because the way that it's going to be rigged relies on these two pieces being separate rather than it following the conventional universal joint rig setup. So I'll show you what, what I mean by that just now. I just want to make some things clear at the onset for your own designs. So the one thing that you need to make sure of is that this cross section origins are at the center. So you see that for this model, whether it's this model, this model, this model, or that model, all of the origins are in that same intersection there. And this is going to be one of the important pivot points uh, in your rig setup. The same is true for the top section. Same origin point, same origin point, same origin point, same origin point. And it's, it's generally easier if you construct it from the middle, just so everything lines up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select the whole thing and then we're going to position them along the edges here. So the technique I generally like using is, okay, so let's just look at it like this. Okay, so first we actually need to rotate it 180 degrees so that this little section here uh, plugs into the, the top platform. I'm going to go into edit mode and then I'm just going to move this so I see that we have uh, we have a mirror modifier that's not okay I'm just going to apply apply it because there's no need for them anymore there's nothing else okay so we're going to drop it so there it is. This not, nothing too exact. It's not too important right now. And then we'll drop it to that point there. Okay. The next part, we're going to select the actuator and deselect. Okay, I don't know what's going on. There we go. Go to the top. And we're going to move them. Okay, wait. First, we're going to move them down. So then we're going to move it over to the right. I'm just watching the measurement at the top. We see we're moving it over by 0 0.2. So when we copy it now, we're going to copy it over by 0 0.4 so that it's essentially mirrored. Okay, the next thing is we're going to make copies of these two and rotate them around. Before we do that, we go into the section here and our uh, rotation point will be the 3D cursor, which is at the center. So we'll go Shift D, Escape to copy or to leave it in place, and then we'll rotate 120 degrees. And then we'll do the same thing again. Escape, rotate 120 degrees. 
This method is generally easiest at the beginning. As you'll see, we're going to move these. We're only going to do that after we've done with the rig. This is just to ensure that everything is in place and centered around the, the 3D cursor. So when we look at that now, that's pretty much most of it almost done. And now the next part will be to put in the rig. The rig is going to be pretty simple because we've kept everything centered to the origin. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to shift A, armature, single bone. I'm going to edit mode. And, nope. Um, select everything and just shrink it down. Let's quickly scroll down on this side and put it in front so we can see it. We're going to use this armature, so we'll go to edit mode quickly, select that, shift S, and then cursor to selected. Then in edit mode, does this work? Oh, it does work, awesome. Uh, selection to cursor, perfect. Keeping the origin at the center. Actually, let's do this little trick that I saw from level pixel level. I'm going to go out of edit mode, go shift this cursor to select it, then go out of edit mode, go back into this one, edit mode again, then we are going to, oh yes, go shift S, cursor to select, or select it to cursor, yes, perfect, shift, select all, shift duplicate it, and then with that one still selected, you go into armature and you switch direction. Select them both, go into individual origins, and then you scale them down. Okay, so now that we've got that, We'll select this top one, duplicate it in place, and then rotate it 90 degrees. Do the same for the bottom one, and rotate that 90 degrees. We'll do this one more time with this piece, and duplicate it, and then scale it down slightly. And this is pretty much, okay wait, almost forgot. So we're going to create one more bone, and this one we're going to place in the center. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, select this piece here, go shift S, because it is selected, go back into edit mode, shift S, selection to cursor, and then I'm going to scale this down and then raise it up to the top and this is going to be our control bone for the rig and now is a good time as any to start naming these elements so we'll say rig control bone or just rig control okay this is going to be top platform yeah, top platform, top platform, and then we're going to give it an underscore because we're going to code these later because these will be multiplied. Okay, so this one is going to be the actuator top underscore enter. This one is going to be actuator bottom. Underscore enter. This one is going to be, what did I name this one? Top platform. So this is bottom platform. Underscore enter. Okay, and then if you remember, we have another small piece inside here. 
Uh, so we'll select that and then rename that to actuator middle. Actuator middle underscore. Right. Okay, so now that we've got these named, yeah, I guess we can. Yeah, it's actually a good idea to do it now. Okay, so we'll parent. We're going to parent that to that. Actually, I'm wondering if I should do it now. Hmm. I should have thought about this before hitting record. Okay, actually, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do it the long way, just so it helps with the repetition. Okay, so we're going to copy that across, and then we're just going to scale these on the x axis. So sx minus 1. And that's just going to flip it, sx minus 1, and then everything else can stay as it is. We're going to go into axial view here, and then I'm going to select this piece and select it again, and then we'll go into wireframe mode, just so we can see, once we get a good enough angle. Okay, so this this line here, sorry, I'm putting it right up against the mic. So this line here is the, we'll mark the center point. So we just need to have it aligned to that because we want to center it. There is a longer way of doing this, but this is just how I found to be the quickest, quickest way to do it. Of course, we need to have our snap on. And then, oh, so now we'll find that this is centered to this uh, setup here. Okay, with, now, with that now done, we're going to select these pieces and we will copy them after changing this individual origins to 3D cursor, which is back at the center. So we'll Shift D and then rotate 120 degrees, Shift D, rotate 120 degrees. Okay, now that that's done, We've now actually got most of our, our, our bones in place. Now the next thing is to set up the bone constraints. But before we do that, let's do some quick parenting. See, yeah, I really should have done it individually, but like I said before, this helps with repetition. Take this bone, shift select this bone, Right click parent, make keep offset. Take this middle bone, select this bone, right click parent, make keep offset. This bone to this bone, parent, make keep offset. And then we will repeat the process. Uh, this bone to this bone. I understand efficiency would have been something to work towards here, but I found that during this whole process, because I, I found this difficult in, at, at the start, but the one thing that helped things stick for me was to have to repeat stuff over and over and over again. Ooh, what are we doing? Parent, Meg. Okay, keep all set. See, another thing I need to learn is how to speak and work at the same time because I have been struggling. And the plane above seems to agree. No, this to that. Make keep offset. This to that. Make keep offset. This to that. Uh, make keep offset. So before we start adding the bone constraints, the last set of parenting we're going to do is we're going to parent these top uh, portions of the actuators to the control bones. So we'll shift select these bones. Lastly, select the control bone, and then we'll go control, uh, right click, parent, make, keep offset. 
So when we go into pose mode, when we move this around, those bones are connected. So we'll start the constraints with these two, the set of 1A and 1B. So we'll select this bottom actuator bone, actuator bottom 1A, and then we'll add a bone constraint, it being a damp track. And then we're going to link it to the top platform 1A bone. So we'll go to target armature bone top platform 1A. We'll follow the same logic throughout. So this bone here will get a time track armature top platform 1B. We'll make our way around. This will be 2A and 2B. Top platform 2A. And dam track armature top platform to B. And our last pair will be these two. Dam track armature top platform 3A. And finally dam track armature top platform 3B. Okay, the next pair we'll work with is the top set. So starting at one again. These ones we will pair with the bottom platform. So with this we'll go add another damp track, armature, bottom platform 1A. This will be damp track, armature, bottom platform 1B. Now we've got 2A and 2B, dump track, armature, bottom platform 2A. And bottom platform 2B. Our final pair, 3A and 3B. Dam track, armature, bottom platform 3A, here we go, and bottom platform 3B. Nice, the final set of constraints that we're going to add will be to these semi hidden smaller ones. Uh, these will be tied to the middle uh, portion of the actuator. So with these ones we'll be adding a copy constraints or copy transforms um, constraint rather than a damp track. So starting at the one pair we will add a copy con copy transforms use the armature and then we'll be pairing these with the bottom actuators. So this one will be bottom actuator or actuator bottom 1A and then we'll set the influence to 0 0.5. This will be bottom actuator 1B actuator bottom 1B rather sorry actuator bottom Influence is 0 0.5. This will be another copy transforms. Armature actuator bottom 2A. And copy transforms. to bottom to B.
So your uh, final pair will be 3A and 3B. And actuate the bottom 3B. And that's it for all of our bone constraints. The next step is now to parent the model pieces to the rig. And that's in the next part. So we'll go into object mode and going into side one, let's just turn this into something easier to see. We are going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So the first set of models we're going to attach are these bottom sections here. So we'll select this piece and this piece, holding shift, then select the rig, go into pose mode, select this bone again, pose, parent, bone. Go back into object mode, select this pair, with that being the last selection holding shift, pose mode, pose, parent, bone, back into object mode, select this pair with the rig, pose, parent, bone, back into object mode. Select this pair, just select the rig, pose mode, pose, parent, bone. Right, now that's that part done, go back into object mode and now we'll select the bottom sections of the actuator. So that will include this bit here, so we'll select that, hold shift and then select the rig. Pose mode, select this piece, pose, parent bone, select this piece and this piece, holding shift, then select the rig, pose mode, select that piece, pose, parent bone, back into object mode, select this piece and this piece, should select that piece last, pose mode, pose, oh, select that piece, pose, parent, bone, and just to check that we're on track, okay, I don't know what I did there, okay, there we are, I seem to have the button stuck. Let's just check to see that we're on track by testing this rig so far. And we see that it's starting to get along. Right, go back into object mode. Select these two pieces with the rig selected last. Pose mode. Select this piece again. Pose, parent, bone. Back into object mode. Shift select these two pieces with the rig last. Pose mode. Select this piece again. Pose parent bone. Back into object mode. Select these two pieces. Shift select the rig last. Pose mode. Select that piece. Pose parent bone. And let's just check to see that they're all done by flexing it again. And that's it for these lower pieces. The next piece we'll tackle is the middle section. So we'll start with 1A. So we'll select the middle piece, shift select the rig, pose mode. Now we're going to go into this X-ray mode so we can see this piece. We're going to select this small piece the middle 
If you look, it's the middle piece, and that corresponds with that piece, with that selected pose, parent, bone. Go into object mode, select the second middle piece. Shift select the rig. Pose mode, select the middle piece. Pose, parent, bone. And I'm sure you know by now what the next section is. Shift select that, pose mode. Select that mid middle piece. Pose, parent, bone. Select that middle piece, shift select the rig, pose mode, select that middle piece again, pose, parent, bone. Let's just see how far along we are. And we've got everything done, and now the final set, which is the top set. This we don't need x-ray mode, so we'll select this piece and this piece, should select the rig, pose mode, select the actuator piece, pose, parent, bone, back into object mode, select these two top pieces, should select the rig, pose mode, select the top actuator piece, pose, parent, Bone. Back into object mode. Shift select these two pieces, selecting the rig last, pose mode. Select the actuator piece again, pose, parent, bone. Selecting these two pieces while with shift. Shift select the rig, pose mode. Select the piece again, pose, parent, Bone. And is that all of them? It cannot be. We got one more pair to go. Back into object mode. Shift select. Shift select these two pieces. Shift select the rig. Pose mode. Select this actuator piece. Pose. Parent bone. Shift select these two pieces, shift select the rig, pose mode, select that piece, pose, parent, bone. Now that's those pieces parented. So the next bit of parenting is going to be the top section to the top platform. So we're going to object mode, select these pieces. Okay, let's just, we can now hide this rig, so it isn't in front, so we can see better. Okay, then we'll shift select these pieces here, all around the rig, or all around the model rather. Those selected, including this uh, top platform piece. Then we'll sh uh, shift select the rig, pose mode, select the control bone, pose, parent, bone. So now, when we move this piece, our rig should almost be. Oh, I missed some pieces. Okay, so let's go back into object mode. It'll be this piece. And the rig, let's turn it in front, pose mode, with that top actuator piece, pose, parent, bone, and then I believe it was this piece, 
uh, shift select the rig, go to pose mode, shift select that smaller piece, pose, parent, bone, and now turning off snap mode, everything is now set up at least on the top half, so now we have the bottom bit. Okay, so we want to spread those out a bit so it gives it a, a better tapering look. So we'll first change this from global to local, just so the axes are now oriented to these pieces versus the global one. So we'll grab this piece, hit G. Oh, I see this piece hasn't been parented. Has that piece been parented? Interesting. And that piece? Interesting. <laughs> okay, let's fix this. Get back into object mode. Let's just select that piece, select this piece, object mode, pose, select this piece, pose, parent, bone. And now that's parenting properly. And this piece, also not, which is fine. Back into object mode. Select the two. Just select the last piece. Pose mode, select this piece. Pose, parent, bone. Very interesting how that happened. Wonder if I'll pick it up in the playback. Okay, should select these two pieces with the rig last, pose mode, with the bone selected, pose, parent, bone. Right, now are you working? Yes you are, yes you are, no you aren't, no you aren't, you should be, and you should be, so it's just these two. No problem. Back into object mode. Select these two pieces. Shift selecting the rig last. Pose mode. Select the bone. Pose. Parent. Bone. Back into object mode. Shift select these two pieces. Selecting the rig last. Pose mode. Select the bone. Pose. Parent. Bone. Right. Now I believe these are set up properly. Yes, and that's now the rigging of the actuators done. Last bit is to move, is to play these out. So we're going to move with the G, holding down the middle mouse button. And let's move them up to this point. And this is about 2.5 that way. So we'll go minus 0 0.25. And then we'll go middle mouse button, minus 0 0.25. And I wonder if it's going to let me do it with the repeat command of Shift R. Let's see. Shift R. Nope. It just it follows that direction, the same direction, which is fine. Middle button minus 0.25. G middle mouse button minus 0.25. And then our last pair. G, middle mouse button, so minus 0.25, G, middle mouse button, minus 0.25, and for the purposes of this tutorial, that's the rig now done. So it should behave as the rig should. What I, I tend to do at this point as well is I will then hide every other bone but the control bone just so it's less distracting so I select them in pose mode and I just hide it. So now you're only actually ever looking at and dealing with the control bone. Okay so this is how far I took the first project the one that you saw previously in the other, previously in the other video. 
but there are additional steps um, that are highlighted in Level Pixel Level's other tutorials, which I'll link in the description. Uh, and those basically have to do with uh, using shape keys to control um, these parts of the actuator so they don't uh, go through the geometry, uh, breaking the illusion as it were. So if you were to uh, extend the actuator past that point, you would stop it uh, breaking apart like that, and if you were to push them in further, you would stop that the bottom section from uh, breaking through. So I'm not going to go that far, I think that's a bit too advanced for this section, especially for such a, a simple tutorial that, that I planned for this to be. So if you're interested in, in really going all the way with that, I suggest looking at those tutorials, but for our purposes, we have what we need for the final step, which is the animation. Let's just quickly turn on the screencast keys. Okay, so we've got all the other bones but the control bone hidden. We're in pose mode. Let's pull up the timeline editor. So we can see what we're doing. The current output settings are 10, 19, 20 by 10, 80, 720 frames at 100 at 60 FPS just to get it nice and smooth. Okay, so at frame zero, we're just gonna hit, we're gonna set that and press I, location, rotation. Then we'll move a few frames in. And then let's get that to median point, global. And then let's rotate and move that about. Let's get it moving forward, maybe just rotate. So it looks like it's leaning in. There we go, I, location, rotation, got a few frames, maybe move it this way, move it that way and then rotate it, maybe rotate it again this way, just so it's a nice dramatic movement, all is looking fine, go I, location, rotation, then let's get a nice slower movement. Okay, maybe let's make you move this way. See, we're getting that, uh, but that's fine. We'll just work with that. Rotate it this way. Maybe rotate it this way. And go I, location, rotation. Got a few frames in, and it's basically just doing this nice and simple, just as a demo for the movement. You can even pair this up with some music to get a nice dancing um, hexapod, that would be quite funny. Thought about doing that, I might do that as a short, we'll see. Uh, let's see, let's rotate it like that. Oops, should have hit I first. Okay, so that's where you are. Bring it down. I location rotation. Okay. Let's move you this way, and then let's rotate down a bit, go I, location, rotation, move it down, then let's move you this way, move it up a bit, move it up a bit more, there you go. I, I, location, rotation, maybe we'll move this even, just so it's a lot sharper as a movement, maybe a bit closer, so it's 
got a nice snap back to it. There we go. And then let's rotate that forward, move that back. Let's see how that's behaving. That's okay. And let's move you over this way. Come I, location, rotation. I don't see how any hexapod would ever need to be positioned like this, but it looks menacing. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, that's that's a cool movement. What you said away? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's just finish this up. Oh, let's rotate that out. Okay, that's a bit too far. Of course. There is a more sophisticated way of building this that involves a bit more constraint, but let's just work within these bounds for something quick and simple. Just to demonstrate location rotation, and I see we're nearing the end, so let's just actually let's do it here. And then let's have one more attack as it were, everyone's fine, I, location, rotation, and then for the last 10, 10 or so frames, let's go Alt-G, Alt-R, and it settles back in place, I, location, rotation. So when you play it, That's interesting. So I guess then it will go into a loop. Okay. And that's a wrap for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.